emails pending. Amatullah says, kindly let us know what we must do during the, this turbulent times of coronavirus epidemic. What are the duas? What are the precautions? And must men stop attending masjids and Friday prayers? First of all, whenever we want to discuss something that impacts Muslims, it is our duty to fall back and search Quran and the Sunnah and what the trusted scholars of Islam said about this. So our logic, our process of thinking is different than other people because we have foundation that we rely on to look at things and know their reality. We as Muslims believe that whatever happens in this universe was preordained by Allah Azza wa Jal. And this was for a legitimate reason and the justification lies with Allah Azza wa Jal, who is knowledgeable, powerful, and fair. So our hearts are calm with whatever Allah chooses for us. Yet, we have to understand that all this around us is the creation of Allah. Viruses are not different. Viruses are a creation of Allah Azza wa Jal. They are soldiers of the soldiers of Allah the Almighty. And they do not act from them, their own selves. And this is why when we deal with it, we have to deal with it in an Islamic way. The Prophet والسلام, visited one of the female companions who was suffering from fever. So he said, Oh, Umm Sa'ib, you're suffering from this fever and we can tell by the way you look, by the way you sound. So she said, yes, O Prophet of Allah, may Allah does not, may Allah not bless fever. So she is cursing fever. So the Prophet said, do not curse the fever because it is your share and portion from hellfire. Meaning that Allah Azza wa Jal, if he were to punish a person in hellfire, the fever he's afflicted by in this life erases that punishment on the day of judgment. And also the Prophet والسلام, prohibited us from cursing the wind. Wind that destroys things. Hurricanes, tornadoes. The Prophet والسلام, do, said, do not curse the wind for it is or it was ordered by Allah Azza wa Jal. And likewise, cursing the day I saw you. It was a black year that we met. And may Allah Azza wa Jal curse the time I should talk to you. Cursing the time, the year, days and months, they don't have a choice of their own. They don't impact our lives. It's what Allah preordained in them that affects us. So when you curse the viruses, the wind, or time, you're actually cursing Allah, the facilitator of things. And this is something that people should be aware and avoid. Also, we have to know that whatever happens to us, this is either a punishment from Allah for our sins, or it's not a punishment, rather it is a test to elevate your level in paradise and erase some of your sins. 
So prophets of Allah were tested with calamities, with illnesses, with poverty, with their enemies attacking them. This wasn't a punishment. It was to erase sins and to elevate their uh, place in paradise. And to us, generally speaking, whatever happens to us is something to erase our sins and a punishment. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَيَعْفُوا عَنْ كَثِيرٍ And whatever strikes you of disaster, it is for what your hands have earned. But he, that is Allah, pardons much. This is what the companions understood. May Allah be pleased with them. Umran ibn al-Husayn fell sick one day and his companions came to visit him. And one of them said, I feel sorry for what you're going through and for your suffering. And he said to him, don't. This is because of a sin. And what Allah Azza wa Jal pardons is far greater than what you're seeing. So this illness is a punishment due to a sin that I had committed, but Allah has forgiven so many sins and did not punish me for them. So don't be sorry. We have to understand what is happening. And likewise, what Al-Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, the uncle of the Prophet ﷺ used to say when praying to Allah Azza wa for rain, he used to preach the people and say, O people, there is no calamity that descends except due to sin due to sins that you commit. And it would not be uplifted, that is the calamity, until you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the understanding of the companions, may Allah be pleased with them, that this was caused by our sins. And not necessarily that everyone inflicted by such a calamity or an illness is sinful, as I stated earlier, it can be to erase his sins and to elevate his uh, position at the side of Allah. So we have a situation. Is it an epidemic? Or is it far greater and it's pandemic? Well, if you look at the facts, you find out that Throughout all those infected with this virus, the fatality is around 2%. And among all those infected by it, the recovery rate, some make it up to 80%. And I got a call a couple of days ago from Belgium. And the brother said that they had discovered two cases I don't know, maybe it's much more now, in Belgium. And he says, can we skip Friday prayer? I says, SubhanAllah, is this an epidemic? To my observation, it is not. Yes, people are hyping it. People are inflating it. But is it actually a world threat or not? Either way, this is not something for me to decide, but it is not something to be classified, classified as a plague or something that threatens the well-being of all people. Scholars say that when it comes to plague, this is a specific pandemic that the Prophet ﷺ told us, if you hear of it in a location, do not go there. And if it strikes a place you are at the moment in, do not run away from it. Do not exit. This is what is known as quarantine in modern times. The Prophet said that 15 centuries ago. So by this sense, can we compare the coronavirus to the plague, 
The vast majority of scholars say no. Plague is different because the prophet told us that the plague is martyrdom to those who die with it. So you should not run away from martyrdom. And this is caused by the jinn, as the prophet has said, the pinching of the jinn. So if it strikes a city you're in, stay in the plague. And if you hear about it in a city, don't go there. But this does not cascade to other epidemics. So the coronavirus is not part of it. And the majority of scholars say that you can run if it hits a, a country because it is not that big of proportion. Nevertheless, Islamically, what should we do? Well, it is only logical if you acknowledge that it is due to our sins, that instead of focusing on wearing face masks, which health specialists say that this is not a good thing to do for healthy people, face masks are only advisable to those who are sick. But healthy people, this increases the chances of them getting the virus. Instead of focusing on washing your hands thoroughly, which is something Islam recommends, to take the means necessi necessary to protect ourselves and our children. But wouldn't be illogical to focus on such means rather than addressing Allah the Almighty by supplicating, by invoking, by begging Him to protect us? And the first step is to eliminate any sins that we have, have in our houses, that we have in our workplace, that we have in our communities, and we have thousands of them. So you want health, you want healing, you want cure. Ask it from who has it in his hands. Repent to him, invoke him. And we as Muslims have a set of dua that we say every morning and every evening. أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق three times. بسم الذي لا يضر مع اسمه شيء في الأرض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم three times. And also a beautiful dua that the Prophet used to say عليه الصلاة والسلام أعوذ بالله من البرص والجنون والجذام ومن سيء الأسقام. You say that in the morning. You say it in the afternoon, in the evening, whenever you want, in sujood. And Allah will protect you. You say, أعوذ بالله من البرص. I seek refuge in Allah from vitago, the changing of the color of the skin. والجنون, insanity. والجذام, leprosy. And ومن سيء الأسقام, and from every evil illness. Ask Allah while also taking the necessary means. Do not travel to places that are infect infected with such a virus. Wash your hands thoroughly. There's nothing wrong in that. Stay away from people who sneeze or cough in your face. There's nothing wrong in that. But at the same time, do not neglect what Allah Azza wa Jal has ordered you to do, and that is to stay away from sin. Um Amira from the States, and I apologize for keeping you waiting. Okay, assalamu alaikum. Salamtullah. 